You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Welcome to The Holistic Movement with host Karina. Karina will look at simple ways to make holistic living easy and accessible. From hydration, sleep, mindset, meditation, breath work, and much more, we will apply current holistic principles to our everyday life and discuss specific attainable changes we can make every week to align with our best health. So please welcome the host of The Holistic Movement, Karina. Hello and welcome back to The Holistic Movement. I'm your host, Karina. I'm so happy that you're here with me today because we are talking about my very favorite thing. Here on Bold Brave TV, we only address the things that move us farther down the road to wellness. And that is why we are talking today about movement. Okay, it is my favorite topic. It might not be yours, but that's okay. Stick around because if it's not, I have plans for you. So, I think that there's a lot of understanding about movement that, well, people are just born loving it. And I'm not one of those people. I hear that a lot from my clients. I just don't love it. What I like to say to those people is you have too narrow a view of movement, perhaps. And maybe if we broaden that scope of what movement could be for you, then you're really going to feel like, oh, I do that already. I can do more of that or I'd like to add that into how I see my whole self. So I like to start the movement discussion with um, your favorite of mine, Albert Einstein. He said, nothing happens until something moves. And he was of course talking about the greater world, but that is very true inside the body. So the body, we have all of these catalysts and these coenzymes that help us take food in. Remember those macros? We were talking about nutrition last week, right? We got your water, your protein, you got your carbohydrates and your fats. When one of those things come in, it's telling us, you know, oh, I'd like you to do this. It activates something. Well, movement activates so much in the body that um, it's how I came into the wellness world. But every time I hear it reaffirm, I always say, and the end of the article says, and so you should exercise, right? If you read any articles about um, holistic wellness or well-being or general lifestyle improvement, almost always at the end it says, and so you should be sure to move, stand, walk, exercise your body because it improves the whole experience. And I am, of course, talking about the muscle tone because that's very important. New study just came out um, recently about the... um, Uh, obesity and diabetes and just the amount of muscle and adiposity there is in your body. So that balance is an indicator to us. So how can we affect change in the body? Well, stimulus, right? We ask for change and the body goes, "Hmm, okay, I'll build you that because you asked so nicely, right? So if you want to get stronger, you have to ask in a certain way, it, with a certain kind of repetition, how to get stronger. If you want to get longer, right, flexibility, we've gone over some of those things in our eight-minute segments together. So all of the mobility, all of the things within the movement frame, you want more power, right? You, All of those things are possible. We simply have to create a stimulus into the body, and then the body will build it. But here's the kicker. It doesn't keep it around forever, right? Use it or lose it, right? I'm going to tell you the truth. It's a two-week 
parameters. So let's say that we get you really strong. Like I uh, thought back at after 9-11, I wanted to be strong enough to carry my children, right? So walk them home, carry them home in my arms. Well, they're very big people now. And I still test it every year. I can do one at a time still, but they're men and they're heavy. And so I wanted to be strong enough to say, let's say, walk with a 140 pound weight on my back, okay? I can do that because I've made the stimulus request. Now, if I stop making that stimulus request, two weeks from now, my body will go, you know what, guys? She doesn't seem to be using this. We can start breaking this down. I know, two weeks is not a lot of time. But that, we're talking about that kind of upper level of stuff. If you stay generally strong, you'll stay generally strong, right? Like if you go to the grocery store and carry your own groceries out, right? That's functional strength that you're gonna maintain because hopefully you go to the grocery store every few days to pick up your fresh, delicious food from the perimeter aisles. <laughs> I'm plugging the nutrition again because although movement is the way so many of us think that is the way into usually fat loss, weight loss, it's actually secondary to nutrition, okay? So movement is so vitally important for many kind of sub-functions and most importantly for feeling really well. Movement does that. So if you're feeling depressed or low or just kind of consistently blue, I know it's very hard to tack onto because it make, depression makes you want to sit. It makes you want to, you lose the get up and go. Ideal version is you just get up and go and you make a parameter for walking or some kind of stimulus request, which changes your whole hormonal system. So movement changes your hormones. It improves your digestion in your body, helps move that food through, right? We want our transit time to be optimal from mouth to anus so that we have just enough time to absorb all the nutrition, but not so much time that things are staying stagnant in there, right? What if you're not eating high quality protein and that stuff is staying in your body for two or three days down in that large intestine. Mm. That's a puzzle for your body and it doesn't usually end well. Other things that movement does in your body, it really helps manage your emotions. I don't know about you, but I've said it many times. I need to think about, let me take a, let me walk and think about that. Let me move, you know, if I have a high emotion situation with someone in my home, the number one thing I do is I just go outside and move. And you know, sometimes I'm just, I'm moving and I'm talking and I'm like, you know, or, oh, look at this. I'm talking with my hands, right? So expressing ourselves with movement is such a vital way of moving the emotions through into a change facility. So that is breath inspired. So we're gonna talk today about marrying the body movement, right? This beautiful expressive thing, whatever you have available to you, right? Even if you're just unable to stand today for whatever reason, whoa, look at these beautiful limbs up here, right? What can you do? Start looking for solutions to how can I move? I often get a list, a laundry list of things people cannot do. I can't run and I can't do, I say, okay, and those things are true for right now. Maybe we can change them, maybe we can't. But let's talk about the can-do list. What is on your can-do list for movement? And let's see what you enjoy on that list. Remembering, I, I mean, I, I love cleaning because it is also one of the ways that I kind of express my desire for order in the world. Guess what? That is movement. The metabolic output of cleaning a house is actually very high. So if you don't really love going to the gym or it's intimidating to you, or you just had a bad experience there, or you really don't think of yourself as a gym person, please don't think that you're not a mover. You still are. We've got to find what gets you going. Today, if you're willing to try something new, and I hope that you are, we're going to move together. We're going to marry breath and body physical movement. That's what we're doing when we come back. Clear space. My name is Karina. This is the Holistic Movement live on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? 
What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick. Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the Broderick Foundation author radio show host and coach John M. Hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, Unlock Your Full Potential with Limitless Growth, published by iUniverse. Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Okay, welcome back. As promised, we are going to be live in our bodies here on Bold Brave TV. You're watching the Holistic Movement. We're gonna move together. My name is Karina. I hope that you'll join me because this is so healing. Let's give it a try. We're gonna start with our hands down on the floor and then we'll start actually just from the When I get my knees into position, I'm gonna tuck my tail under a little bit. Here's a trick. If you want to know if you are in a plank position or if you are in what we call open as we look up, rotate, bend this right elbow and inner calf until maybe and inhale, pull towards Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, It's like a a flow inside. Yeah, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Okay, my beauties, we are going to move together. We're going to come forward to the plank position. We're going to roll the shoulders back, tighten the glutes to check. Slide the hips back. Step your left foot forward on an inhale. Exhale, hold here, sink your hips. Inhale, turn your heart open to the left. Look up at the left thumb. Exhale, bend your left elbow. 
slide your left elbow along the inside of the leg, maybe to touch the ankle bone, maybe to touch the floor. You'll feel a beautiful lower back stretch. Inhale, bring the torso up. Exhale, press your hips back forward. And the next exhale brings you down to the floor. We inhale, press back up to the plank position and exhale, hold. We're gonna try that same sequence again, but you can try it from a full plank position if you'd like. Inhale here, push the floor away. Exhale, step the right foot forward. Inhale, open the heart. Exhale, bend the right elbow, slide down, tap the ankle or the floor. Inhale, plank position again. Exhale, lower to the earth. Inhale, scoop up, roll your shoulders back, and exhale, press back to the plank position. Inhale here. Exhale, step your left foot forward. Inhale, open and turn the heart to the left. Exhale, bend the left elbow and slide it down along the inner leg. Inhale, bring yourself back up to a plank. Exhale, lower down to the push-up position. Inhale, you can scoop up and through, opening the heart. Or you can just go back up in the push-up. And then exhale, back up to plank. Let's try it all together one more time. Inhale. Exhale, step. Inhale, rotate. Exhale, bend the elbow. We're trying to marry the breath and the movement. Inhale, plank. Exhale, lower into the push-up. Inhale. Try opening your heart, looking up this time. Exhale, other side. Inhale, step forward. Exhale, press and hold. Inhale, turn and open. Exhale, bend your left elbow and slide it down on the inner ankle. Inhale, bring yourself back up to the push-up position. Exhale, lower down to the floor. Inhale, scoop up, opening the heart. And exhale, press back to the plank position. Hold right here. Nice, deep breathing. If you want to try a challenge, move your feet a little wider apart. Rotate to the inner and outer edge of the foot. Lift the arm up. Inhale at center. Exhale, rotate to the other side. Exhale at center. Great job. Let's do it again. Open and inhale. Exhale. Make sure your hips aren't sagging. Open and inhale. And exhale. Bring it all the way back to center. Okay, one more addition. Maybe you could leave your hips up, but tap one knee down and tap the other knee down. So I don't mean this. Uh-oh, no, uh-uh. Keep the hips quiet. Tap the knee and tap the knee. Yeah, you can hear my core is working hard. Guess what this looks like? Walking. All of these things are just an opportunity for me to feel my body moving. And I don't know about you, but if you've been doing it with me the whole time, I feel warmer as well. I can feel it changing the chemistry inside of me. I love that. It's a vital feeling. It feels like I am in control and I'm empowering this body to be who I want it to be. I hope you feel that when you are sitting here just like this, maybe you could try straightening your legs. Maybe you could think about your spine being really tall. I'll give you that side view. It's the same thing. I've got my legs straight and I'm sitting tall. Oh, hey, check yourself out. Is this what happened when you sat down? It could be, but you know what? We can change that. Remember, stimulus is what changes the body. So we're going to lift the torso back up. We're going to pull the belly button in and we're going to be at a right angle. When we come back, we're going to talk about system upgrades through movement. This is one of them, just feeling better and vital in your body. My name is Karina. You're watching The Holistic Movement live on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. 
Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of the Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, Hope, and Support for Caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Okay, welcome back to The Holistic Movement. My name is Karina. We're here live on Bold Brave TV. I hope you enjoyed moving with me, even if you just thought about joining me. That is called contemplation. There's pre-contemplation, which is what brought you here. That's what makes you part of the movement. Contemplation is like, hmm, maybe I'll try that later. And then, my friends, then is action. That's right on the other side of contemplation. I'm hoping that you can move yourself there. Remember, what moves us from contemplation into action? I'll tell you, what is your dream? That's what moves us. If you want to play with your grandkids, right, and you think, oh, I don't even know if I can get up from the ground, then you are going to want to invest in movement. You have to test your body to know where the current limitations are. And then if you're not happy with where they are, I hear a lot of this, well, I used to be able to do that. How long has it been? right? The body only keeps it around for two weeks, my friends, and then it starts breaking it down and breaking it down. So the great news about that is once you get it up to a certain level of what you need it to be, all you need to do is keep it there, right? You just keep that stimulus happening within every two weeks, and you're going to maintain that strength potential or that mobility or that flexibility, okay? So wonderful news for all of us. We just spoke briefly about some of the systems that movement helps, but let's talk a little bit about what happens inside the body and very importantly, inside the mind when we move. So when we move, I don't know if you felt it, but if you did the movement with me, I got warm, right? That's a metabolism change. You've probably heard about your metabolism. When people say that you should have a 2000 calorie diet, calories are units of heat, that's important to know, right? A calorie is a unit of heat. So you have a 2000 unit of heat diet. Maybe you keep kind of around in there. Calories aren't so important we know now, but it's a great way to talk about this, right? So the quality of the food is very important. The nutrition in the food is very important. But let's talk about just, just the, the, the pure energy of the food. So when that energy comes in, I don't know if, about you, but uh, when I eat, I actually, I warm up. My whole body gets warmer. When I move, my whole body gets warmer. This metabolism fluctuation is part of our hormonal system. And eating changes it. Moving changes it too. So let's say that maybe you ate a little too much, right? There was a holiday weekend last weekend. A lot of my clients said, oh, Karina, don't worry. Guess how you can fix that? By moving, right? So that's why if you had a big Thanksgiving, American Thanksgiving dinner, well, the whole family gets up maybe and goes for a walk in the neighborhood because that is what helps digestion. It helps your blood sugar. So you eat and then you take all of that energy out of the food and all the nutrients, and then your body puts it in the muscle, right? So you're just sitting around here, hanging out with me on the Holistic Movement Show, you have all of this energy sitting, potential, potential waiting for you in your muscles. And as soon as you start using, let's say your quads or your hamstrings, or we use a lot of upper back and um, stabilizing muscles, then you squish and release, squish and release all of those filaments of the muscle fibers. Well, then you're run out of sugars and your body goes, hey guys, we need more sugar. 
So where do we get the sugar from next? Well, we get it from the bloodstream because there's sugar hanging around in the bloodstream waiting to be redistributed to these big muscles or little muscles that we've used. Guess who's the sugar happiest organ in the body? Your brain burns two times more sugar than anything in your body. This is big. So sitting around and thinking is a very sugar happy thing, which is one of the reasons that we really long for carbohydrates. We're looking to have a certain, why? Because our brain wants to keep feeding itself so that we stay really focused. And not only that, we continue to make good decisions. So mental clarity is improved. So I think, I used to think before I um, started studying this stuff, I used to think that the heart just kind of pumped stuff around and it distributed. Well, if we increase the breath rate, if we increase the heart rate, the nutrition flows faster. This metabolic exchange happens. So when you use the muscle, there's a little byproduct where the blood comes around and kind of picks up that byproduct and hey, it drops off some more sugar. So that's the second way. So there's sugar waiting in your muscle and then there's sugar that's kind of floating around in your body, be waiting to be distributed. So now let's say that you used up the sugar in your muscle and you've used up the sugar from the food that you ate today. So there's the blood flow is deplete in sugar. It's never really totally out, but the process of keeping up, let's say you're in your second half hour of your marathon, you are no longer keeping up with the sugars that were stored you're not keeping up with the food that you ate. Your demand is too great. This is when you go into the very inefficient land of unlocking fat stores. Okay, so it's the last because it's the least efficient. And the body knows that a lot of times what we lock up in fat <coughs> is actually not so much just pure energy, but excuse me, it is also... Um, uh, toxins that we didn't know what to do with. Remember I said during the nutrition things, one of the great reasons to eat clean foods that don't have preservatives is when your body doesn't know what that thing is, dextrohydrolala, it goes, huh, and it puts it in a fat cell and leaves it for later. This is why people feel very unwell if they lose a lot of fat very quickly because they take all of those toxins and they unlock them back into the body and the liver's going, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to deal with all of this stuff too, right? Because we have to process, the kidneys have to, pro the whole body needs to detox. One of the great things though about increasing your meta metabolic rate, of course you're burning more calories, you're improving all of those systems of the body, but guess what? This is your largest organ, your skin, your beautiful skin is your largest organ in your body. And it is also an organ of detoxification. And the best way that it does that is through sweat. So if you are a person who has a lot of environmental stresses in their body, the best thing you can do is get yourself a little damp, a little moist, a little sweaty every day to give your body a chance to get some of those toxins out from the inside and washed off the skin, right? So increasing the heart rate, increasing the breath rate, increasing the heat in the uh, calories are a unit of heat. Now we are changing the entire chemistry inside the body. This is how we feel so great. We used to actually think that it was the endorphin system. Oh, I've got my endorphins are so high. I've got a runner's high. It is not the endorphins. It is actually the endocannabinoid system we now know. So that endocannabinoid system, it flushes us with this feel good hormone, right? We feel accomplished. Now, here's the thing, when we're done with movement, right? When we've done, you know, went out gardened or you raked the lawn or something, we feel like pretty darn good, right? That is a reward system in the body. Hey, thanks for going and cleaning that stuff out, reorganize that digestive, reorganize the hormone system, getting the clarity and the focus back in the brain, reducing anxiety, my friends. If you are an anxious person, and I will tell you the truth, I think I've seen a lot on the other side of COVID I, with such a big heart, I say I see a lot of people who spent most of COVID watching the news and that fed right into their nervous system. And that, my friends, is absolutely aided by movement. Okay, so you're saying, Karina, I hear it, I hear it, I know that movement's good. Let's talk about what you can do, how you can move in the world. 
We're going to come back and we're going to discuss all of those things. My name is Karina. This is The Holistic Movement. We're live on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside, you know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of the Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Welcome back to The Holistic Movement. My name is Karina. We're live on Bold Brave TV. I hope you're feeling live and life in your body. And we are going to talk about ways that you can increase the number of minutes in your day that you are moving. We've all heard that sitting is death. It's pretty true. Sitting is not what we were built for. We are made to be very mobile, right? So if you do work at a desk, maybe consider standing for a half hour and sitting for a half hour, standing and sitting. Okay, so I understand, right? You've got to work. And initially, maybe it's five minutes of standing and 45 minutes of sitting and five minutes, some kind of very, but what we're doing is we're actually unlocking this potential in our mind. We're changing our, I work in an office, I sit at a desk, maybe, is there some part of your day that you could do pacing? Is there a part of your day that you could do outside walking in the sun? Everything is now wireless. Could you take that phone call out to the park on a walk, right? I, th I hope that we can normalize this. So many CEOs that I work with, they don't sit around the boardroom all day. They, for their executive team, they walk it out. It improves the, uh, the ability for the brain to come up with creative solutions. It improves literally the blood flow, right? So let's consider that it is a superpower to be a super mover, but it doesn't mean that you have to be a sprinter or you have to necessarily play rugby or something aggressively big. Let's consider that what we need to address first is this belief that you're not a mover. Well, you are because hopefully you got out, out of bed and you went to the bathroom and you, you know, move through your day. That what you're saying, when I hear people say that, what I hear is I don't like these conventional ways of moving. I'm not a team sports person. Oh, all cool. I don't really love running. Is that okay to say? Yes, that's fine. But maybe you're a gardener. That's a beautiful way of moving right? Maybe you love to be outside. Maybe you're a hiker. Maybe you are just a compassionate person who loves dogs and you go to the local ASPCA and you walk dogs, right? There are so many ways that we can weave more movement into our lives based on our core values. 
right? Is one of your core values being a good community member? Maybe there's someone in your neighborhood who just got a new hip. And I'll tell you what they need. They need to get up and move. And it's a little scary to do on your own when you have a new joint. Maybe you can knock on their door and say, hey, could we say every Tuesday at noon, go for a walk together? Your core values of being a good community member can move you to be a better person in your own experience. So these are just some creative ways. What I'm really asking you to do is just widen your scope of what movement could mean. I'll give you a few tips that are pretty easy, right? Small, easy options. If you live in a car culture, right? I live in New York City. So for me, it's pretty easy. 10,000 steps a day is what is recommended. That's five miles a day, my friends, five miles a day, okay? A lot of people think, oh my God, I can't, I, I don't even think I do a half a mile. That's okay, we can build you up. I promise you, remember, stimulus response, stimulus response. You begin asking for, if you have a half mile, congratulations, that is great. We're just gonna build a little bit more every week. You're not gonna start doing five miles to, tomorrow. You're gonna build, if you do a half mile usually every day, what if you built that to three quarters of a mile every day? Okay, this is why so many people use these wearables because it really helps us track and honestly know, well, geez, I don't even, cover a quarter mile a day. No wonder I'm not feeling well in my body. I'm not supporting the system by moving through the world. Okay, so that's a great one. What if you live in this car culture and you decide, every, you know, I don't know how it happened, but as soon as I'm in my car, I get to a parking lot and I think, well, where's the closest, where's the closest? And I drive around for like four minutes looking for a closer parking spot. Let's just say that forever, whenever you get in a, two, a parking um, situation, you're gonna park as distal from the door that you're going to as possible. There's a great way to add steps. So you're gonna always park at the far, far end. And you just walk all the way, you're gonna go walk around the store, you're gonna walk all the way back to your car. Okay, you've added some steps into your day. Maybe you usually take the elevator up or the escalator you stand around on. Okay, you can get on the escalator, but walk up. You can get on the elevator if you need to, but maybe you could just take your time on the stairs. I will tell you, if you only have 10 minutes and you want to have that metabolic response in your body, the number one exercise to do is climbing stairs. Just, I live in a, a high rise building. Not everyone lives in a high rise building, but maybe you have stairs in your home. Up and down those stairs for 10 minutes, I guarantee you, you are going to be a little schwitzy and you are going to feel good in your body. You're gonna be strengthening your legs. You're gonna be increasing what we call cardiovascular endurance right? All of those benefits from just 10 minutes of moving. Ideal version though is we don't sit for eight hours and do one hour workout and say, okay, done and dusted. What are we really trying to do? We're trying to stand up more often in the day. So number one way that I get people to stand up more often is make sure your hydration is on point. Because if you're drinking enough water, guess what? You have to stand up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> so this is a great way to encourage yourself to get up out of your chair more often if you are an office worker or if you just have gotten into the habit of being a sitter. Okay, what else can you do? You can challenge a friend, um, make it something nice. Like my girlfriends and I sometimes will do, um, uh, go to the nail salon together, right? So whoever wins pays for that week's nail salon. And we're trying to see who can build up more steps, right? So, you know, find someone who's at the same level as you and who also wants to increase their steps make it a challenge. Uh, my sister does this with her friend. Her friend has been in Hong Kong. My sister's been here in the US. It's a great way to stay connected to dear friends and family members. Maybe you're trying to encourage your mom to be a little bit healthier. I guarantee you this will help. It keeps you uh, talking about health and moving, literally moving toward it every day. Okay, there's one more thing that I really wanna talk about. It's called NEAT. Hey, this is a NEAT thing. N E-A-T, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Okay, so obviously this was a scientist who came up with this. So we'll just call it NEAT. NEAT is all of the movement in your day that you don't call exercise. So let's say that you say to me, hey, Karina, I'm really great. I get up and I get outside in the sunshine every morning and I move, I walk, I run, I, I move outside, I do CrossFit, whatever you do, fantastic. So then you think, okay, that's my workout. Now, do you go and sit for eight hours? 
mm, your NEAT might be pretty low. What has been found is that if you increase your non-exercise activity, you will begin to chip away at your metabolic strongholds, which will make you feel better, healthier, and faster. So how do you do that? You fidget, you stand, you garden, you clean, all of those kinds of things, all of those little movements in your day. Or you can talk with your hands. <laughs> Whatever works for you. When we come back, we're going to talk about moving toward your happiness. My name is Karina. This is The Holistic Movement, live on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Have you ever felt like no one is listening or you're not getting the honest attention you deserve? Do you even know the kind of attention you want or need? You are not alone. Alice Aspen March is here to help. Thanks to Alice, through her epiphany and research over the word attention, there are solutions to the attention dilemma. Worldwide audiences have been enthralled and engaged for over 40 years with her visionary and pioneering observations. The kind of attention we get and give is vital to improving our lives and society. Alice and her weekly guests review game-changing insights for transforming and improving our understanding of attention, providing techniques for creating healthier and empowering behavior. Get a new perspective on a mainstream word. Tune into Why Our Attention Matters for fresh and thought-provoking conversations every Tuesday at 3 p.m. Eastern on BoldBraveMedia.com and the TuneIn Radio app. Okay, welcome back to The Holistic Movement. My name is Karina. I'm always so glad you're here. If you have questions for me, thank you for those who put those questions in. You can email me, Karina, K-A-R-I-N-A, at Chakra Holistic, C-H-A-K-R-A, holistic.com. I'll answer your questions directly, or I'll answer your question in the next show. So here's what I want to talk about. Um, this is a great quote. Uh, Taylor Wolfman said, Rather than thinking about exercise as a way to burn off calories, so we now know what that's about, right? This is an aside. He says, think about it as a way to burn off stress, ego, anxiety, and worry. So we touched on this a little bit, my friends, but I, I really think it bears um, a pause because since COVID, I have seen so much of this worry and anxiety living in people's bodies. And it shows up, you know, in the back of their neck or in the tightness of their glutes or in the set of their pelvis, the tightness in their jaw. You know, it's the people talking like this. And they can't, they're, they're locked down in the fifth chakra. There's your fifth chakra here at the throat. We want you, I want you to be flowing the energy through your body. Why? Because it helps you know your purpose because then you are in connection, body, mind, and spirit. If you want to be in connection with your soul, you have to be in connection through this body. And my belief system, we picked this body. We chose this one. How we use it in this world is an expression of how we are feeling just for right now, everything is changeable, my friends. If you don't like how things are going, then you need to change the behaviors that you're doing. And that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about movement. I'm not saying that I need you to become super excited about, oh my God, I wanna go do a, a, a Zumba class, okay? Maybe it's not your thing. No requirements to, to push up against things that, that are so uncomfortable for you, but, 
maybe you could request from yourself some shift in your body that will move you closer to your happiness, right? And that state of well-being brings out the creativity, right? When we're feeling well in our body. I'm not saying comfortable because some of the things that we have to do to be strong or to be have the endurance that we need, they it gets a little uncomfortable. I'm not talking painful. I'm saying it's uncomfortable. It's a little, ooh, we get a little gritty. Two things happen in those moments. You get to know who you really are, right? If you really want to know yourself, then do something that you find to be challenging physically because then you'll know is your tendency when it gets gritty and you feel uncomfortable and you think, oh my God, everyone's watching me. Guess what? No one's watching you because everyone's doing their own thing. But do you quit on yourself? Do you double down and go too hard? right? I'm just going to do this. And then you end up hurting yourself. Do you land somewhere in the middle? I'm just going to try my best, right? And you, you, you get shaky with it and you think, okay, well, let me come back next week and try that again. Get to know yourself, not because it's a fixed thing, but because if you don't like what you see when you get to know yourself, that is something that you can change. Emotions, emotions, they move, they are with motion, right? In the body, right? So they move out and in. When we invite the breath in, right? We're inviting in something. What are you inviting in on your inhale? What do you want? What do you not need anymore on the exhale? That's why we married the breath and the movement today, because I'm saying, what are you taking in? What are you requesting from the universe? And what are you giving up to get that, right? This exchange with the universe inviting in, Oxygen is our fuel for movement, right? It is your fuel system. The breath gets that cerebral spinal fluid pumping up and down the spine into the stem of the brain, into the brain itself, back down into the tailbone, out to the limbs. Woo, in and out, in and out. Movement does that. It moves the emotions. So if you have big emotions locked up in your body, I cannot tell you the number of times I've been working with somebody with big breath, repeat it, and suddenly big tears come. No big deal. That was locked up somewhere in the tissues of your body. It needed to be expressed, expressed out right? Through movement and limbs. And, you know, when we cry, right, the diaphragm kind of bounces around and we really cleanse the body. Same thing if we yell or if we, you know, are feeling so much anger that we oh, whew, put it out into the universe. Through movement, right? Try not to trap yourself in this cage of your body. It is here to express your feelings. That's why dance is such a beautiful art. <coughs> but maybe dance isn't your thing, right? Maybe you're a painter, okay? Oh, that's also standing around, looking outside at the horizon, or maybe you're looking at people's faces. Maybe you're expressing, but in some way, you're moving your body toward your happiness. <coughs> I better take a sip of that water, excuse me. <coughs> so we're... Mm moving and I'll give you a tip. If you're not such a huge fan of movement, but you are a huge fan of music. Oh, is that a great way in? Or hey, how about this? Are you a big fan of audible books, right? I will tell you a great tip. So we all know we should be out, we should be walking more, at least, let's just say at least walking because it's up, it's standing and it's perambulating. Those are very important things physiologically for us. How about you make a rule that when you buy this really juicy book, whatever you like, it's the one you like, not the one you think you should read, but the one you like, the one that, ooh, I can't wait to hear what happens next. You can only be listening to it if you're standing, or you can only be listening to it if you're walking, or you can only be listening to it if you're walking outside, right? Uh, layer it up for yourself, make it a success layer, right? Set yourself up for success. Same thing with music. What if you there's a new album release that you really can't wait to hear? Maybe you set aside time in your schedule and normally you would just sit around and listen to it. But hey, what about this? Why don't you take it out, 
Go to the gym with it. Go for a walk with it. Take the dog out with it. Just move in your body. Find a way to make the, a reward in the action. So layering music into your movement is really a great way of inspiring yourself to do it, right? Another thing that you can do is just a basic reward system. You can literally pay. There are some great apps out there that you put in a hundred dollars, let's say. And if you do it, you get back 200. So you, that just means that you have to do whatever your goal was. I'm going to move for 20 minutes a day. You get paid back from the app. This is who some people are really turned on by money. If that's you, there's a way into improving your movement. Guys, when we come back, I've got one final beautiful thing. They're called movement snacks. You're going to love it. So come on back. My name is Karina. This is the Holistic Movement live on Bold Brave TV. We'll be right back. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation author radio show host and coach john m hawkins reveals strategies to help gain perspective build confidence find clarity achieve goals john m hawkins new book Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Okay, welcome back to The Holistic Movement. My name is Karina, live on Bold Brave TV. I'm so glad that you stuck with me straight on through because we are ending with... Mwah, a beautiful gem. These are called movement snacks. This is really powerful. Remember we talked about that neat, that non-exercise activity, thermo, you know, thermogenesis. You don't have to remember that stuff. This is what you do, right? To increase and boost not only your steps for the day, but really what are we trying to do? Vitality, feel fantastic in your body. You know, sometimes you walk toward people and you think, ooh, he's living inside that skin, right? Isn't that powerful? I want you to feel that powerful inside this skin that you have, okay? Here's what a movement snack is. So let's say that you do work in an office and you think to yourself, ooh, I need a cup of coffee. I need a little boosty boost. I'm getting ooh, a little low down at the end of the day here. And guess what? You can do this very same thing as a cup of coffee. We'll talk about that on another show uh, with movement. Okay, I'm gonna give you a couple just quick mwah, fasties. Jumping jacks, boom, 20 jumping jacks, right? If you have a, a test or an exam or if you're gonna be a, the presenter for something, I guarantee you 20 jumping jacks, whoosh, brings all that blood flow to your brain. It wakes everything up. It moves everything around. It changes you from stagnant to available, wide open and receiving, right? You're gonna be a better receptor for the world. This is what we're doing. We're kind of moving through the world with all of our senses receiving 
and then exchanging with the world. So what else can you do? Jumping jacks, a wall sit. If you don't know what that is, I'm about to tell you. It's sitting against the wall with your spine like you have a chair underneath you, but you do not. So it's right angles, right? Your spine is against the wall. Your legs are right out in front of you and your feet are right underneath you. Wall sit. But what if you wanted to like increase your focus? Stand up and just balance on one leg. My friends, boom, your brain goes, whoa, I'm not tired anymore. I feel that writing and tilting technique of the brain lighting me back up, bringing me back into my body, into my breath, into my wellness. You, my friend, are a part of the holistic movement. You are a whole creature. We're gonna treat all of you together. When we come back next week, we are gonna float into a conversation about hydration. It is a very important conversation. I hope you can join me for it because you are very important in the world and I want you living in your purpose. My name is Karina. This is Bold Brave TV. I can't wait till next week. We'll see you then. You've been watching The Holistic Movement with host Karina. You are part of the movement, the holistic movement towards wellness. Join us each week as we discuss specific and attainable changes you can make to align yourself for your best health. Come join The Holistic Movement. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.